If you have a bamboo printer at some point, you're probably going to want to get an AMS unless you have one already. It makes the printer far more capable because you can print in multiple colors, of course, but you can also load in spools, which are all of the same material, and it will automatically switch to the next spool. Now, those are pretty cool features. But one of the issues with the AMS is that there is not a lot of space inside for desiccant. And you can kind of see what I've done here. I've used up this additional space to put in some packets of desiccant. Now on the menu for the printer, under material, there's a little gauge here. And right now, although it's really tough to see, I really wish they would make this a little bit larger. The higher the, the gauge on the side, the better off you are. And mine says three bars. So I think there are some 3D printed mods that you can do as well for these desiccant holders and store a little bit more desiccant, which is more universal than these. And it's probably possible to dry these out if you have a filament dryer as well to reactivate them. What you see here is one that I've 3D printed. I will link in the description below. Uh, because it's pretty cool, but I think there's an issue with it in that it is fairly well sealed off from the rest of the internal environment here. There's not really a lot of air circulation going on. So although it's better to have it than to not have it, I think we can do something a little bit different to be a little bit more dynamic with a little bit more airflow going on to help keep this container dry. And this is one that you can 3D print. I will again link in the description below. This one here is designed specifically for Bamboo Lab spools and it kind of snaps in. I like the design. Uh, it's not easy to print this at all. There are a huge amount of retractions. So one of the issues with this design is that when you snap it in, it's only exposed on the ends. And hey, maybe that's enough, uh, but I think we can do a little bit better the other issue with this is that it's not universal. It only fits into this spool. So going on the same premise as this one, that we're gonna put something in the middle of the spool, but have it so that there's a lot more airflow and have it so that it is universal and fits all of the different types of spools as well. So let's get into it. All right, so we have our basic cylinder here. So what we need to do is get some airflow on the bottom. We're gonna get some airflow in the cap when we do that and around the cylinder itself. So the goal with this is to be able to print this as fast as possible with a stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And we also need to design a lid that does not unscrew itself and spill a whole bunch of desiccant all over the place. So to get this to print fast and to get it to print with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, what we're gonna do is use spiralized outer contour, also known as boss mode. So what we can do is start with a small shape like this and have that go all the way around the cylinder and we're gonna cut into that cylinder. This is just the shape that I went with. Uh, there are probably lots of other options for this, but uh, it does work with spiral. It has to have a continuous path when it extrudes the material. So this particular shape is going to allow that in and out, in and out, and it's gonna leave some voids in there as well, which is exactly what we want. So if we go over to Bamboo Studio, you can see the result. And this is with spiralized outer contour, and you can see both the top and the bottom have the same shape. Now what I've done to print with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is change all the line widths and I've upped them by 0.3 millimeters. So you can see here I'm at 0 0.72, 0 0.8, 0 0.72, 0 0.75 and so on. So that's going to give us a much stronger structure. So in order to secure the lid, what I've done is created these little depressions with some spheres and had them go right around the perimeter. And then as for the lid, you can see here I've just mimicked that curvature. And what I've done too near the bottom is I've given it a little bit of a curve so that it leads into that snap just a little bit easier. All we have left to do now is go ahead and print a few and try them out. So I spoke briefly about how fast this was going to be to print and that that was important. This model will print in 23 minutes and then some setup time for the printer. So overall 30 minutes. The model I showed you earlier that goes into the spool would take two over two hours to print. So this is quite a bit of savings.
This was a cool little project and I thought it was a great use of Spiralize Outer Contour in order to create these openings here. I've already gone ahead and modified this design a little bit. I've created more openings in the top and the bottom and I've created larger openings in the side wall as well. And I'll link this in the description below if any of you want to print it yourself. These beads here are color changing beads. They'll turn to green when they are saturated. All you need to do is pour them out, flatten them out, and bake them for a little while to dry them out again. Now, if you have these packets like I did, you can also salvage those by cutting them open and putting them in a bag. You can do the exact same thing. You're just not gonna know when they are saturated. Leave me a comment below to let me know what you think about this design. Is it a good idea, bad idea, or do you have any other ideas of your own? If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you wanna help support this channel in a different way, you can visit the link below to my Patreon page. Take care everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.